Hi everyone. Uh, first of all, thanks for joining the session. So today we are going to explore decoupled Drupal. In this session, uh, we are going to cover what's Drupal, uh, what's decoupled Drupal, uh, why to even use it. Some uh, with the demo, we will know how to use it and conclusion. So what is Drupal? Decoupled Drupal. Decoupled um, in general term means that uh, you separate the content from where it is stored and managed from where it is presented to the user. So in the context, you can say that the UI is separated from the backend. So that is what decoupled means. It is also known as headless. So in some space, you might have heard the term headless. So this is what it means. Well, uh, some popular websites which are using decoupled Drupal are weather.com, IBM Clouds, Universal Kids, and uh, the famous Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Uh, so that is also made with decoupled Drupal. Now, uh, let us first see how Drupal support this headless. Uh, so first, uh, if you see this diagram over here, uh, we know that uh, the, the contents we store, uh, then we have the modules which we use in order to uh, utilize the contents. And on top of that, we use permissions for the access. And in and all, and then we have the theme there which represents our data. So uh, if you see all of these are presented in a layer. If we uh, if we somehow uh, cover the back end uh, in a box, we can see that we can separate out the front end layer out of the Drupal. So this is the general concept on which uh, the decoupled Drupal is been built upon. So let's first know that uh, what the differences between a coupled, that is the traditional Drupal, and uh, versus the decoupled uh, Drupal. What's the differences between them? So if you look at the diagram over here, uh, you will see that in a monolithic structure uh, as, as Drupal, we have our CMS with all its uh, optimizations and all its uh, performance and all its structure. Uh, and we have our front end, uh, which uh, in, in case of Drupal, it's uh, a twig, the template engine. So that's how we render our uh, front end. But uh, in case of decoupled Drupal, what we want to do is we want to utilize all the functionality of our CMS. Uh, and with the help of web services, uh, web services, we want to uh, send the data out to our front end service and also receive the response from our front end service. It, it is a two way communication that we want to achieve. So this is uh, the general uh, structure for a decoupled uh, Drupal. Uh, it can be for any other uh, technology as well, but this is the general structure. Now, what are the types of architecture which are present in the market right now? So we have traditional, which is like coupled system, the Drupal that we use. Uh, then there is headless, um, aka decoupled Drupal. And there is hybrid which is also known as progressive decoupled. So we will know about them uh, one by one. Now, what is actually needed uh, for setting up the Drupal uh, to be decoupled Drupal? The first thing you need to do is you need to check your course setting. So cross browser origin settings needs to be first enabled in services, your DML. And we will go through each one of the steps in our demo. It's just an overview. So first you uh, check your core settings in service ML, then you enable uh, modules. So I'm here using REST. So REST module, REST UI, and serialization module. So by default, REST actually, when you enable the REST, it uh, has a dependency on serialization module, and it will enable it. So uh, then you want to enable the resource you want, uh, the REST resource you want. And uh, then in order to use uh, the REST uh, via uh, the REST API, you want to add a query parameter uh, with format JSON in order to get that response in JSON format. You can add any necessary REST methods at once. So REST methods, uh, what I mean by this is post, get, the CRUD operation that we know. Uh, also, one thing you need to also check for permissions in Drupal uh, if you are facing some issues. So that can also be uh, something you need to look at. So let's look at the demo first. So this is my React application, uh, which is built. And uh, this application is taking the data from our Drupal server. And if I load it, uh, first it 
Oh, uh, before that, let me just begin uh, with the Docker components I've built. So if I go to my root directory, you will see that I have enabled Docker. So why have I'm using Docker here? Uh, I'm using Docker uh, in order to uh, containerize every uh, services that I have and then push it uh, onto the Docker Hub. Docker Hub basically is a registry where you can upload your Docker uh, where your images, which is Docker images. And from that, uh, from that uh, place, from that is registry place, you can download your images and can deploy it to any environment. So with the, you can even add Kubernetes to it in order to orchestrate the containers. But what I did uh, in this uh, demo is just uh, using Docker Compose, I have added my images. So if you look at it, this is my Drupal application and it is utilizing the official Drupal image which we can find in uh, uh, the Docker uh, repository. So if you go to, let me show you. Yeah. So Docker Drupal image, you search. So you will find this image over here and you can simply pull it or uh, just stay, uh, take the tag. So there are tags which are present here. So any of the tags you want. So I have used the latest one, which is uh, the Drupal version 10.1.3, but you can use as per your requirement. Now, why I'm using Docker here and why not other technology? So I'm using Docker so that I can orchestrate my containers as per my needs. So currently I'm running Drupal 10, but maybe my backend needs Drupal 9 or maybe in future Drupal 11. Uh, so I can easily swap out my image and uh, uh, add my changes and it will work on any environment and then deploy it to the uh, Docker Hub from where we can download and use it in any environment. Uh, so this is my Docker, this is my Drupal image. Uh, then it also depends on MySQL service. So this is my MySQL, which I'm using. Uh, I'm using the official MySQL uh, image, which is also present in the Docker Hub. Uh, there are some environment variables which we need in order to uh, use this MySQL service. And rest, uh, this is my front-end service which I've created. Now the front-end service, uh, it's not coming from any sort of image. If you look, the image key is not present over here. It's actually utilizing a, a build file, a Docker image file that I've created in my React app. So you can see the path, which is uh, React app uh, inside it, we have the Docker file. And I'm just using a, a, a plain node environment and utilizing Docker commands in order to start my front end. So that's uh, with my uh, Docker. So what you need to do is once you set up it, you go to your directory where your Docker compose file is present. I can show you, this is the Docker compose file. And you simply run Docker compose up in a detached mode and there you go we have our services ready let's check in the docker desktop so we have our drupal application we have our mysql front end and this traffic is basically uh, we i'm using for reverse proxy uh, and uh, for that i've used traffic uh, traffic otherwise you might not need it uh, so let's go to the page and start up application. So previously it was not uh, working because we haven't started our uh, container. That's why. So you can see our React app uh, loading all the data from backend and it's showing the data. So now let's go to our uh, backend, which is uh, our Drupal app. So this is our Drupal app. This is also running based on the container. It's uh, running the latest image and we have our contents. So in our React app, uh, what we can do is we can simply add nodes. So let's say you want to add a new data. So let me add it. So 
So we submit it and voila, we have our data in our reactor. Well, that's cool, but what about our backend? Did it save it? See, we have our new entry of TechX here. So what we are doing over here is, uh, this is completely a different domain, completely different environment. And we are just uh, um, using uh, the native applications resources and uh, the facilities that it provides to uh, to communicate with the backend that we have. So it can be Drupal, it can be any application. And if you see, uh, not edit, let me just open the page. So whatever data we have uh, given, it actually takes it. Now, uh, what about? Uh, the other way. So let me just change it in my Drupal application, modified, and save the node. It is saved in my Drupal application. That is loaded. And there you go. We have our data in our React app. So, uh, other thing which you can do is now I can also delete my uh, entry. So it's deleted. And if you come over here and check it, see, it's not present. Even in content, it is gone. So you can basically communicate uh, with your React application and your Drupal uh, in both ways. So it's a, it's just kind of like handshaking method it's utilizing. So that's how we are communicating. Now, how we are doing this stuff. So let me go to the Drupal app. First, what you need to do is you need to make sure that you have your services.yml enabled. Uh, and there you will see there is a course configuration which is present. First, you need to enable it. And uh, you can uh, add any headers if you want. I have not specified any headers as, now, as of now because uh, uh, different methods, like if you want to upload some file or other thing, you might need to then uh, again go back to application and add that particular header for that uh, request. So I've allowed all of them and allow methods, which is like get post, uh, delete all the requests. I am allowing everything as of now. You might want to uh, modify it as per your needs uh, for production. And uh, I am here. One thing I'm doing is I'm allowing my origin, which is my front end app. Uh, Otherwise, you can also use start to allow everything, but for uh, uh, security reasons, I'm allowing only the front end app to access my site. And there is this expose headers, which uh, can also you can also use in order to expose some of the control headers. If you want to know more about course settings and all, you can uh, visit MDN and check the documentation there. Uh, so you can know about each of those uh, keys present over here. So that's what you want to do first. Then what you need to do is you simply go to your Drupal application. You need to install one uh, one module. So before that, what you need to do is you need to enable the REST uh, web services. So this is present by default on core. Uh, so you just enable it and it will automatically enable, uh, enable our, your serialization module and then you can start working. But uh, in order to work with REST, if you want a UI to see what are the declared uh, REST services for everything in the code or custom module are present, you can use REST UI. So it won't be present by default. You need to install it by going to uh, just uh, Composer install it and you will have it. So that's one thing you need to do. So you need to also install REST UI. And once you install REST UI, you can go to config page and by default, everything will be disabled and you will have uh, several, several APIs, uh, several APIs which are presented to you. You can use as per your needs. So currently I will be focusing on my content, but uh, since uh, based on application requirement, you can enable any one of them and use it on your site. So here I am using content and uh, what, what does it do? Well, if you edit this page, I'm allowing this methods uh, and I'm accepting the request format in JSON and I'm authenticating with cookie. Now, 
one thing to notice is I'm using authentication cookie, but you can also enable basic authentication or auto provided authentication, any sort of authentication by just enabling the module and you will find uh, another checkbox with that authentication module and you enable that. But why I'm just using cookie here then? So I'm using cookie because cookie uh, it will be helpful for you if you want to integrate your services into let's say mobile application or a, a next JS application. So cookie based applications are much more easier to communicate. That's why I'm using cookie. Okay, so once you're done with this settings, you just, uh, so you are good with the configuration. Now, uh, what you need to do is it already give, provides you the path that you need to uh, call in order to communicate with Drupal. So in the front end, what you need to do is if you go, let me show you the front end code. So this is my Drupal uh, and now I'm going into my React application. So I have uh, built this React using the uh, using our NPM uh, React, create React app, but you can use white parcel, webpack, whatever you want. With that configuration, you can uh, show the React application. So if I go to my React application, here, what I did is, let me go to the index.js first. So this is my main route and uh, I'm, I'm just importing my application app file. And this is my main file where I'm adding all my logic. So the UI that you see on that page is coming from this uh, particular component. And it has several sub components as well in order to show uh, the details. Now, the main thing that you want to know in React is uh, how can we call uh, the data that we are calling, right? So what I have done over here is I've created a new component. So if I show you the component, so this is my result JS, which is which result JS means this particular component which is showing my data over here. So this component is utilizing uh, the, our hooks, our use effect and use state hooks in order to update our states. And what I'm simply doing over here is I am calling one of the functions which I've created in order to fetch the data. Now, what is this function? Now, if I go to my file, you will see I have added a few of the functions. So this is the get data function. This is post data. You can delete, you can store image. So you can do multiple stuff. Um, if I go to the basic, so get data, I'm just querying, uh, I'm generating a URL with an endpoint, which I've stored in one of the constant files. And then I am adding uh, the query as per uh, uh, need. So it can be uh, some query parameters that you want to add. So that can be also added from this function. So once that is done, you simply call your uh, URL with, I'm using fetch, but you can use anything. You can use Axios, you can use uh, even uh, jQuery to call it, but whatever uh, suits you, which suits your need, you can call it. So once uh, you get the response, we are just uh, converting into a JSON and uh, we are returning the response. Now, once I'm returning the response, I am updating my application with the help of let me show you the with the help of this use effect hook i'm just updating my application and i'm using set timeout just for intentional ui so you can see the shimmer effect if you are lo loaded you see the shimmer effect that's why i'm using that otherwise it's super fast uh, but that's how uh, we are doing it so uh, once that state get updated you have your uh, api call hit to your backend servers and it receives the uh, data in JSON format and you see your data here on your application. Now, uh, that's how this has been built. So in order to, uh, in order to, let's say, uh, you want to add something, uh, some more uh, functionality in your React application, uh, you can just add a simple file like this. So uh, like uh, the get.js file, get data file, and there you can 
add all your REST uh, API functions for calling the particular API, and then you can receive your data in your real application or any other application. So what are the general uh, general uh, API that I'm using over here in order to fetch the information from the Drupal? Let's see. So first, uh, if I go to any content, uh, let me just open this content. And if I use the query parameter question mark underscore format equals to JSON, you will see I'm getting my JSON response. So this is only happening because I'm enabled my REST API and that's why it is showing. Now, you can do this uh, particular uh, query of uh, the node or, or the content for any of the content types, but maybe you want to show some filtered content. Maybe you want to show content from your view. So you can even do that with the help of REST APIs. So for, what, for that, what you need to do is you need to go to view and here, let me just open the content, let me this article. So in, in a, when you create a new view, you just need to add, a, so if I, if I try to create a new view, there will be an option to add a REST export. So that uh, particular view you want to use in order to uh, create the REST API settings uh, with, that, uh, with that basic sculpture that it provides, then you can even modify that sculpture according to your needs. So it, it just bootstraps your uh, view with the basic URLs that you want to communicate with. Now, in my uh, in my case, what I did is I just did the same thing, just added the REST export view, and I have updated the fields here based on uh, what field I needed. I have added over here, and uh, then uh, you can add add anything. You can even add relationships uh, in order to add some more information as, as you need contextual filters, even if that you can use. Uh, one thing to notice is uh, in the past setting. The authentication is cookie, but in your case, if you enable some other module, maybe some author module or a basic authentication module, you will find it there and you need to select that because that will be needed when you call your API from your front end. I'm showing uh, all the items here, but you can even utilize the functionality of pager. So if you want, you can even output that result into a pager so what it will do is it will simply uh, add a, like uh, let me show you the demo of this particular view so if i hit so this is the path i have added for my uh, api to show the view results so if i hit it you see i am getting all my results over here but when you if you enable pager then you just need to append question mark with page 1 page 2 um, and you will get your data. So you can utilize the React in order to uh, quickly call uh, the particular page and you can update the UI quickly with the help of UI. It, you don't even need to reload the page uh, or even use Ajax for the slow loading and stuff. So that can also be done. So I think we are good with this. So, so that's how uh, this has been created. And you can add as many functions as you want. Uh, you can add uh, any any form in order to communicate with your Drupal, and that's how uh, you can create a decoupled architecture. So that's what this image is representing. I'm using Docker in order to containerize my application, and once this is all done, I can simply uh, export my containers into the registry, and then we can use it in any of the environments. Let's go to the next thing. Well, all the things that we've seen so far are good, right? But what are the disadvantages of uh, this decoupled architecture? So there are several. So first thing you will have to uh, give up on all the off of the shelves Drupal facilities that you get. So it can be, let's say uh, the view mode, then it can be image styles, 
you you can use image styles but you need to call an extra api call in order to get that image build out for yourself and then you have to call again recall an api to feed that image into your content type so that will take two and fourth motion so it's it's going to take a lot more network request and hence it might not be that much performant so that is one of the things which are disadvantages and second thing hosting so if you want to handle a decoupled architecture uh, since it's a microservice and not a monolith service uh, you have to you have to maintain several repositories um, you can you can make single but uh, it will it will be difficult to handle it uh, then you need to have some sort of container orchestration like kubernetes or maybe uh, maybe docker uh, in order to help you with uh, communicating with this tool and uh, also it's very hard to maintain and debug because uh, sometimes uh, you might want to achieve something so uh, for example if you simply want uh, to have an image style on uh, some of the images you have to call uh, several network request in order to get that image and then feed it to your content type so it, it's uh, the communication and the code will get very huge and it will be very difficult for you to debug as well so where do we need it uh, where do we need this decoupled architecture and why do we even use it right so if you want to uh, distribute your content through several channels so what i mean by that it can be any mobile service you can even create some next js application and then communicate with drupal backend you can even create uh, let's say an app with uh, uh, a view js uh, with a totally separate nuxt environment and you can communicate with Drupal uh, backend and all, facilitate all the services of Drupal backend and show your front end to the user. So basically, we are diversing from uh, just a single web application to, let's say, mobile application or uh, even games. It can be made like that. So that's how uh, that's that's one of the possibilities that we want to achieve using the decoupled Drupal. Now, improving the front end with latest technology, as I said, so you want to use the modern technologies like React, Vue, uh, Angular, whatever you need, you can do that. You can integrate it. You can even include uh, this uh, the goods of microservices. So you can, up, like Flipkart, so you can uh, just have a config UI uh, where, where you want to maybe update your client banner based on the dates. So you can just do it using config UI uh, via React and your banner will be updated on that particular date without even communicating with the servers, uh, without even touching the front end. So you don't, you don't need to touch the front end. It will be updated on that particular date via config UI, and that's it. So you can actually work uh, with a configuration that we've seen, right? So we are configuring all our resources into JSON, and then we are communicating with the front end. So you can do that as well. Uh, now. As I told, like there are some disadvantages of decoupled Drupal. So what should be the possible solution if you want to move towards a decoupled Drupal? So the answer is go progressive decoupling. Now, what is progressive decoupling? Well, uh, let's say you have your Drupal application and you want some of the components to be uh, modernized. So maybe you want a widget, uh, or let's say you want just your header to be React or maybe uh, your uh, uh, your rendering of the listing items to be React. So I haven't added it into this demo, but what you can do is simply you add a custom module and there from there you just control your template with a root. So like a React application have a root, you can also create a root in your template file. And from that you can call React view or whatever service you want, whatever, and you can just update that particular widget or particular section of your site to be uh, like uh, decoupled. So that's how progressive decoupling works. So step by step, you want to decouple your enti entire application. But if you don't even want some of this cool features that Drupal provides, you can just keep it as it is and move forward. So that's a new way of dealing with decoupling. So that's it for this session. And if you have any question, please ask. And thank you all. Hi, guys. Thank you for watching. I had an amazing time learning all the new things here at SpecBeast TechX. And if you did too, do let us know in the comments below. Keep following SpecBeast for the latest trends in technology.
see you in the next one.